Hey, America Finding Its Way is the 11 o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. We have an important discussion. We're trying to be helpful here. We're trying to examine Trump, uh, Trump's legal solutions, legal solutions for Trump. Okay, and uh, we have our regular, uh, regular full panel, Tim Apicella, Winston Welch, uh, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and Cynthia Sinclair. And we're gonna start by playing a little video uh, that goes uh, from page to page, uh, examining the issue to get warmed up. Okay, let's play the video. <clears throat> okay, it's a commentary. Alternatives to the commission. You know the commission. Okay, stop here. And this is a kind of outline. We have the possibilities of state fraud law in New York, um, and that's criminal and also civil. We have state uh, criminal law in Georgia for interfering with elections. We have federal law on the insurrection. And that's against the law, you know, to have an insurrection uh, or a conspiracy for one uh, or an accessory to one. And um, we have the United States Constitution on insurrection, a specific provision in Article 14. Okay, next slide. Okay, so first is we want to give advice to Cyrus Vance, to Mark Pomerantz. He's the one that Cyrus Vance has, has uh, brought in on things, and he's an expert in <clears throat> dealing with people like Trump. And he's probably going to succeed Cyrus Vance when Cyrus Vance retires, I think, at the end of the year. And, of course, the attorney general for the state of New York, Letitia James, is also involved in the New York actions against Trump. So our advice, file actions against Trump and his friends immediately, as soon as they can. Um, we know there's a grand jury uh, looking into it, but um, shouldn't wait. Everybody's waiting on that. OK, then prosecute Trump. Um, again, if he intimidates, uh, I mean, a second prosecution, if he intimidates um, either the attorney general or the grand jurors, the petty jurors, those are guys who sit in the trial, um, the witnesses or the judges, anything like that, any improper actions against them. And this is listed because, in fact, in the past, in Trump's uh, rich uh, uh, litigation history, he's done this sort of thing or threatened it. And then uh, the third item here is, uh, in, in case of New York, um, expect appeals and litigate them vigorously. And don't let Trump kick the can down the road so we have confusion until it gets to the Supreme Court. Um, we should, they should um, litigate any appeals vigorously. Okay, next, next slide. Okay, then there's advice to the Georgia DA. Her name is uh, Fanny Willis. She should prosecute Trump and uh, co-conspirators again, as soon as possible. She also, uh, last word was that she had a grand jury going and then prosecute him again for separate prosecution. If he intimidates or tries to intimidate her uh, or any of the grand jurors, petty jurors, witnesses or judges and um, expect appeals and litigate them vigorously. Pretty much the same advice um, to the officials in New York. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, now we, we're talking um, about Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States. Uh, he should impanel a D.C. District of Columbia grand jury uh, to look into January 6th. Um, definitely, grand jury could do that, and I'm sure there'd, there'd be a lot of people who wanted to see that. And let them investigate everything. They could be a great investigative party, in addition to whatever Nancy Pelosi decides to do in Congress. And uh, then... Um, Merrick Garland should prosecute all of the insurrectionists, not only the ones who've been arrested so far, but the big guys like Trump, um, like Rudy Giuliani. Uh, okay, and don't let them delay or disrupt these proceedings. Got to move on. The public is waiting. The public we don't want the public to lose confidence in the system. Okay, next. Okay, Nancy Pelosi. She should appoint a House Select Committee and let them investigate everything and subpoena Trump and prosecute him. He has no immunity. Uh, and if he fails to show, or he lies, or obstructs, take appropriate action. Congress has the power to do that. Um, and she should not, they should not hesitate. Okay, next. Okay, and this is, this is a, a real corker, I think. Advice to those people who would run against Trump. That includes not only GOP people, but Democrats. If you want to run for president from either side, uh, this is what you can do. You file your nomination papers early so you have standing. And then with that standing, you simultaneously file suit against Trump, arguing that he is disqualified to hold office 
under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. You may ask, what exactly is that? And I'm going to tell you. This is a summary of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. No one can be a senator, representative, elector, or officer of the United States, covers a lot of ground, or a military officer, a member of a state legislature, or a governor, or a judge in any state, if they took an oath to support the Constitution and then took part in an insurrection or rebellion against the United States, to wit, January 6th, or gave aid and comfort to the enemies of the United States, of, of the United States Congress. Uh, or rather, Congress can change this only uh, by two thirds vote, which is hard to get. So that, for example, if um, somebody took a, uh, filed a suit against Trump uh, and said that he was not qualified to run, the only way he could be excused from that under the provision of the United States Constitution is if, if Congress changed it by a two thirds vote. He's not gonna get that two thirds vote. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, the benefits of this, um, this way, the people will be held, those responsible will be held accountable. The public will find out and see justice done, really important because people are losing confidence in the government. People will again have confidence and the GOP may reconsider its leadership which all of those are really wonderful benefits to be achieved and are necessary and should be now. Next, I think I'm almost finished here. Okay, one or all of these alternatives, alternatives will keep Trump away from us in 2022, keep him out of office in 2024, and restore confidence in government. I guess that's the whole thing. So let's stop there. Let's go to Tim. Uh, Tim, you know, how important is it to have a commission investigation prosecutions of some kind in, in the environment of today's, today's world. Morning, Jay. Um, extremely important. And why? Well, it comes down, I'm sorry to say it, to simple terms, the preservation of the rule of law and our democracy in the United States. It's just that simple. And without, without following up on January 6th and all the other uh, criminal charges that uh, the state of New York and potentially Georgia will have to file against Donald Trump, um, if you don't do that, our law is a mockery. The law of the land is a mockery, and it's, it's a, a paper tiger, if you will. And so it's absolutely critical that uh, these things be charged or, you know, investigation. Well, what do you think of Mitch, the evidence McCon Mitch, McConnell says, Mitch McConnell says, we know all that we need to know. Well, that we've all seen Mitch it on television. We know everything we need. There's no need for further. What do you say to him? Well, his name isn't Moscow Mitz for nothing. That's what I'd say. <laughs> doesn't care. Doesn't care about the Constitution. He doesn't care about the oath that he took to defend the Constitution. All Mitch cares about is Mitch and his retainment of power. Nothing less, nothing more. Uh, you know, as I was watching uh, all the screens, if it was a multiple choice test, I would say uh, add a box and check D, oh, all yeah. the above. Um, my only question is, do you have to be a candidate in order to file uh, that Donald Trump isn't eligible for a re-election due to the 14th Amendment, paragraph three? Do you have to be a candidate or can anyone file it? I don't know the answer to that. I just do know that if you were a candidate, you'd have a better logical position on standing. Okay. And they will oppose everything. They will obfuscate everything. You know that. But let, let's go on to Cynthia. The reason I'm asking Cynthia is that she made a list of all the crimes that she is aware of. And I, I wonder, you know, how they fit in the, in, the, um, in the outline that I just gave you. Well, actually, I'm aware of quite a few others. I'm only going with the ones that he's charged with because I, I'm aware of quite a few others. But there are 14 um, active cases against them. Georgia already has two grand juries that are considering subpoenas. Um, and I can give you that as for criminal election influence investigations and um, what's called. So, and then we've got uh, five cases that have been filed just about the January 6th. We've got the, the DCAG for incitement criminal investigation into the role, but there's no actual charges filed yet on that. Um, but Bernie Thompson, 
filed charges. Incitement suit. Um, it's an incitement suit for the January 6th. Uh, Eric Swalwell. Oh, wait, I need to mention that Bernie Thompson's suit is against his names Trump, Rudy, and two of the right wing militia. And I'm not sure which ones, but I think it's the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys. And then um, the Capitol Police have a suit for the January 6th riot. And they're, they're going after Trump, two police officers, Capitol Police officers for injuries. And the NAACP um, has the Legal Defense Fund is going after them because of the big lie and how that affects voting rights, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, let's see then. Okay, so those are the only ones for January 6th. I'm gonna come to my most important one that I find a personal investment in, and that's the E.G. Carroll and the Summer Zervos one. And those are for defamation because when they came out with, um, with uh, saying that he had, well, E.G. Carroll said he raped her in uh, Bergdorf Goodman's uh, department store in New York many years ago, still has the dress, they have found DNA on the dress. If we can get DNA from him, we might be able to make a match. So I think that's a really big one, but there's this, there's this weird thing involved in that one. The DOJ is involved. Now, he is now a private citizen, and hopefully all of that is gonna go away. The DOJ was involved under uh, Bill Barr. Right, because they came in, defend him, and they, and they claimed he had some kind of crazy immunity from uh, raping people than Bergdorf Goodman. Well, no, it's the defamation thing. You can't sue him for defamation because he said those things about her in the line of his job, is what they're trying to claim, which is nonsense. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, okay well, I mean, it's, it's suffice to say there's a lot of suits that weren't, were not on my outline. And Winston, I want to ask you, I mean, if 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 you're Trump, how concerned are you about this? Is this really going to get in his way? I know spells no. Nothing's going to happen. At the end of the day, there will be a big dragnet that's put over all. It's it's all of his people, all the people that surround him. They will be caught. But at the end of the day, nothing will happen. And uh, it's it's interesting to see Joe Biden fighting against some of the the. Um, the the request to get the papers out. And I think he's sort of trying to preserve some uh, presidential authority in there. That was an interesting one. Um, nothing's going to happen to Donald Trump. Uh, he will be slapped on the hand. He will lose some, uh, if, if you're already with him, you're already with him. Nothing is going to change people's minds. Uh, they're- No, it's not, it's not the people, it's, it's the judges and the jurors. The judges it's those, and the jurors. Those, they're independent of the base. They don't operate in a vacuum, and as I've said many times, we do not put our former presidents in in prison. He will be discredited fully as m more than he is already. But it, it's not good. It, well, let me refine my question: country, Is this going to affect the twenty twenty two election when and his ability to galvanize the GOP? Is it, it going to affect his ability to run in twenty twenty four? Yes, I think it could. And I think it could galvanize it in the wrong way. And so that's that's my concern is that this will just make him a martyr to the cause. And so for right now, let them absolutely go through these prosecutorial motions. Let them investigate. I thought your best one uh, of the ones you had there was for Merrick Garland to have the DOJ run a, um, a, a separate investigation. But all of them, I agree with Tim, all of the above. You didn't have that on your box to check. All of these need to be pursued so that there can be as much of a uh, correct and proper history out there, at least for those that are even willing to to look at it, the uh, the, the crossover soccer moms or whatever the, the, the mythical version is that that that, that has, isn't in one camp or the other. But I think, it, again, at the end of the day, nothing's going to happen to Donald Trump. Uh, now, there might be a lot around him, his families. We're going to see who's going to flip, and it's not going to be pretty, but... Uh, at this point, I think people just want it to go away on some level, and yet we have to delve into it, or it's not going to go away. It's going to come back. We're, I'm more con much more concerned about the efforts that are going on in every state. Do you think office. the press has made enough of this? No, the press hasn't made enough of it. Our Senate has made a mockery of any sense of justice by having 
no um, investigation into this. It's shocking. I mean, these people's very lives were in danger, and they are so um, so afraid and so cult oriented that they or whatever. It's really amazing. It is. Let, let me they go don't to even, they don't even have their self interest at heart, and so we we can't expect a lot from there. We will let, get. Let me to go to Stephanie Winston. I, I want to. Yeah. You know, Stephanie, I don't know if you've got my list of possible strategies that Trump might entertain. And I wonder if you could comment on that. It's a list of about, uh, looks like 25 or so things that he might do. Um, can you describe that list and give us your favorites? I think the list, the, the list was long because there are many options and he's perfectly capable of one or all of them, even all together in his way of doing that. Um, I, I wanted to go back to your question about McConnell and, and agreeing with everything that Tim said about that, but this has to do with your question about the list, is I am uh, um, I, I'm, I'm amazed that O'Connell, McConnell can play everybody that we care what's on the videotape because we do not need to care anymore about what's on the videotape because everybody's seen it. So what it is we need to know is everything that's not on the videotape, okay? And especially here too for the videotape. And if we can go back to what might be middle of story already at the presidential um, uh, uh, debate, when he was asked about, when Biden asked him to talk about the, the people and to tell them what to do. And that was when he said to the Proud Boys, you have to stand by. He sounded the alarm during the pre presidential debate. And I'm utterly waiting for the media to pick it up and start to talk to us about what's not on the tape, but is appearing the tapes of the insurrection, but is all the other stuff we need to know, that being one big thing. So what, what is that the tip of the iceberg, the signal, and that things are already in place? Was that the middle of the planning or was that the beginning of it? Anyway, that is uh, something the media, I feel, is letting us down. And it's the media that needs to pick it up and start looking at it for the stra strategic the strategies that are clearly in operation and where they may have come from. And McConnell is so crafty and just uh, having everybody. He's a master of timing, isn't he? Yes. He knows he knows when the news cycle has moved on and people aren't interested anymore. He's capitalizing on that. But let me go through some of the, um, you know, the possible strategies that occurred to me. Here. There are a few of them. I won't read them all. One is uh, Trump is going to be desperate, right? The operative word is desperate with all these lawsuits that I've mentioned that Cynthia has mentioned. Um, he is just covered with lawsuits here. And some of them are threatening. And I know that people don't want to see a, a president go to jail and all that. And the base is not going to want that. And Trump is going to be desperate. What is he going to do? One is he could activate the base, activate the extremists, have another ins insurrection or do the August trip, you know, with the, with the coup in August. Uh, he could distract the, the country with divisiveness, race riots, a, clock, a, a, um, a stock market crash. Who knows what kind of leverage he could put? Um, he could distract the world by creating a phony war, asking Putin to do that. Uh, it's it's that, uh, that, that old movie, the tail that wagged the dog, if you remember, a phony war for PR purposes. He can intimidate witnesses, as I mentioned, prosecutors, uh, jurors, judges. He can intimidate his own counsel. Um, he, could, he, could select, uh, he could do selected disappearances of people um, by you know, his proxies. And he can deny having anything to do with it. He can mount a huge PR campaign uh, using every media he can and suck up all the oxygen and say, oh, gee, this is all a witch hunt. It's all the Democrats. He could uh, defend all these cases to the max, every single one, and lie and fabricate. Don't forget, fabricate evidence. He could blame other people, which I think he has shown he will do, including even family members and Alan Weissenberg. You know, he can blame other people. They say that uh, Alan Weisel, Weisselberg can turn on him. Well, he can turn on Weisselberg. He can claim, um, you know, that it's, uh, he can, oh yeah, he can intimidate, threaten, um, compromise people, disappear, witnesses, prosecutors, judges, judges, jurors, judges, and his own counsel. He can claim the Democrats are doing that. 
he can make a, a circus and disparage the justice system in the course of these cases. Uh, he can get sick. He can have COVID again or a modified version. He could have a variant. He could have scrotal bone spurs. <laughs> he could claim mental incapacity, insanity, um, and uh, inability to defend himself. He can claim a phony baloney claim of immunity that he's still the president. He can get a 2022 GOP Congress if he wins the Congress to enact an immunity bill uh, to enhance that claim. He can try to try to do the same thing in state legislatures like Georgia and three or four others. He can claim his counsel was unqualified or incompetent or corrupted by the Democrats. He can appeal everything on a slow bell and hope for Kavanaugh and Barrett. He can wait for 2024 and get a GOP um, president, in, including possibly himself, to pardon him for the federal crimes. He can get some GOP governors to pardon him for state crimes. He can settle a la the Sackler Purdue settlement was announced yesterday, um, where the settlement wraps around all the uh, co conspirators and family members that were you know, in a line of fire. He can try a settlement, and that's what you know, an adventurous litigator would do. And finally, and, uh, and you mentioned this, Winston. He can go to Russia. He can go to Russia and he get, get the protection of Vladimir Putin. And he can go to Russia with his family and his co-conspirators. Or in the end, and I doubt this is true, they had a psychiatrist on, on MSNBC last night asking, you know, what happens to a guy like this, um, you know, under, under desperate circumstances? And, um, and the answer was he gets more desperate and he tries more crazy things. But I don't think that that psychiatrist would say he gets self-destructive. Nevertheless, I've added that at the bottom of the list. Okay, so Stephanie, comments on all these fantastic defense mechanisms that Trump could try. Very, um, you know, very inclusive. I, I believe he's doing them all. I think he's already doing as many of them as possibly he can do in the circumstances. So it's already, all that's in his head. You're right on, you've got him cold. And those are that's where they that's where he is. And he's down there with nothing else to do, um, kicking around, uh, trying to get all these. He's playing his organ. And each one of those keys is one of those items that you list and one of those defenses, one of one of his remedies. So he's going to be doing all of that. That's what we're going to have to go through, because the leadership will not take control of him and won't uh, do their duty. Yeah, that's really sad, but maybe they will if it gets in, into really hot water or he further decompensates. So uh, uh, Tim, I'd like you to uh, kind of synthesize all this. Going around, you know, Cynthia has pointed out there's other crimes here, other suits, you know, civil suits, and to some extent criminal suits that are still pending, plus all the things that could happen now. Winston has said, um, you know, Trump should not worry that, uh, that his base will protect him and that the, the system will not um, punish a, uh, a president, okay? Uh, Stephanie uh, has uh, opined on what, what Trump might do in terms of defending himself. So the question I put to you, Tim, is all, the, all that considered, um, is, is he gonna get away with this? Is he gonna get away with this? Um, can, can he skate through this um, or, or uh, is it going to catch him at some point? And if so, and this is a hard question. What is going to happen with all these suits? No president, I think no individual human being has been faced with so much litigation, civil and criminal, as this one man. It's quite extraordinary. It could hardly be um, a conspiracy of Democrats. There's so many people, so many claims. Is it going to catch him? You know, as I listen to all of what Cynthia and all the, the the plethora of items that Donald Trump's strategy could possibly pull off. And I'm reminded of a, a no gangster um, statement from the, uh, the mafia back in the 1930s. And that is uh, the gangsters used to let their bullets rust because this is before we had antibiotics. And so they would uh, let their bullets rust and they would also roll them in garlic. So if the bullet didn't kill their victim, the, the uh, blood poisoning and the tetanus would. So, to make this analogy, Donald Trump's not going to get out of all these. 
something's going to stick out of all the, the again, the plethora of charges against him, one of them is going to stick. And I think the easiest would be right away is to have Cyrus Vance file in federal court um, a violation of the 14th Amendment, paragraph three, that he is not fit to be president ever again. And get that one. Check off the easy things first and then go for the more difficult ones. Um, it's amazing what might stick as soon as you start getting them to stick. Uh, sometimes it's a cascade and an avalanche of, of, of lawsuits that actually start swaying in the other direction. And that other direction is guilty. Uh, I agree with Winston, he'll never serve time. But I think that he will be prevented some way, somehow, of serving 2024 as a candidate for president of the United States. And I think that's a good thing for the country and a great thing for our democracy. It would be good, Winston, if that happened. However, how do we get there? Because um, he's going to be desperate. He's going to try some of these defenses out, maybe a lot of them. Um, and, and the base is going to be unhappy. And the media, I'm not sure if the media is going to really cover it the way they should. How, how much of a price does the country pay? Does the country pay, the democracy, the people in general? How much do we pay in order to get to the end of this problem? We've already paid so much that the, the trauma to our national psyche, to our families, to our friendships, to our, uh, uh, you know, some people, they're, they're, they're married to now. That it, it's beyond Donald Trump at this point. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's, she's the head of the Republican Party now. It's QAnon. It's the, it's the, the, the Hydra. Uh, that that's happened. So Donald Trump is, is is in some ways almost he's still of course the the head of it all. But um, out of out of this has popped just so much. Um, uh, there there's uh, it, it may be impossible. I I would refer you to the Atlantic today, um, Adam Serwer's article that says the Capitol rioters won. Although some Republican leaders deplored their violence. Most have come to support the rioters' claim that Trump's defeat meant the election was inherently illegitimate. Now, whether that's true or not, we have to assume it's true. Uh, the base, when you read about that and, and what percent of Republicans feel the same way, they're living in an alternate media universe. They are not watching the show. If they are, then send a shout out for us because, uh, you know, you're opening your eyes at least. And we welcome you to have some alternative things. And we watch Fox. Uh, too, just to get um, until we can't um, anymore. But it's important to to have a, a, a source of news. But if as long as it's news and not just propaganda or lies, and that's the difference. So again, search out for yourself. Our country, you know, we have to have these talks on very individual levels. We have to have them on meta levels. We have to have them in the courts. We have to have them in in the state houses. But right now, just look across your country and see how many states just are in a, a entertaining laws to support. Yeah, that's a good uh, indication of what, they, of what they think about Trump. It's a good indication of what they think about Trump with all his uh, losses. So, Cynthia, let me flip the question that I asked uh, Winston on you. Suppose he gets away with this. Suppose McConnell gets away with this. Suppose they're able to stop a delay or you know, obfuscate any, any investigation or any prosecution. Because remember, our rule of law, as it has been over the past few years, is in jeopardy. And that includes the court system. It includes the justice system, including the criminal justice system. It is a logical possibility that he will get away with it. If that happens, what effect on the country? Every parent knows when your kid gets away with something and doesn't get any kind of accountability, he does it again, and he gets worse and worse and worse, testing those limits. And that's what will happen if he gets away with it, is that everything's going to fall apart. It's going to completely erode the rule of law in this country. And that terrifies me. Um, you know, bad presidents come and go. Good presidents come and go. This guy is dangerous. So all this, you know, talk about we don't put presidents in jail. Well, when they're criminals, we do. And he's been a criminal for so long that, you know, he needs to be there. We are still at, um, at risk to his base. 
These people that have been radicalized, all of this. So my quote for today comes from Carl Sagan. <clears throat> you can't convince a believer of anything for their belief is not based on evidence. It's based on a deep-seated need to believe. Okay, I want to refine that question to Stephanie. Um, what what is this doing? What has it done to the what do we call it, the devolution of the um, the GOP? Uh, what's the connection between the GOP and its active membership, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, and you know, and 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 the rule of law? I mean, what what has happened, and um, and how does that connect up with Trump's um, litigation troubles? Wow, that is a question, Jay. That's a, a huge question. Um, I, I humbly submit that uh, all these Republican friends I uh, have say, "Well, yeah, well, we're still Republican, but we're we're a clinging to we we admire and we want to live in those principles of Republicanism." So all of this is just surface level. Um, stuff going on so you know we'll get through this but so i mean no but it's it as you say devolution i i think that they well they say that and they say that those principles still work for them and they're still going to do it but i i agree with your point about devolution i think it's coming to pieces and it has no no it, nowhere to stay stay it, it's unstable it's unstable it's this um uh, anarchist kind of thing it's got to come to pieces and i'm just thinking back to like mccarthy how long it took the country going through the mccarthyism the joe mccarthyism and the communist uh, under every bush um that went on way beyond a uh, tolerance until it finally just broke and i would uh, i would predict that uh I guess I I can predict and I hope for it to come soon <laughs> that this uh this will just dissipate in in some move that someone finally gets enough courage to make oh wow that. from your lips um okay tim you know we're not going to have time for last last comments here but i want to ask you a last question anyway is um if we don't have a meaningful gop and right now we don't and it's going to get worse i think um can we have a government without a second party there doesn't seem to be any sign of a an emergent replacement for the GOP. Um, so can we have a government with only one party and the other party saying no to everything or or devolving into the point of, you know, completely being ineffective on everything? Can we have a government that way? We do in Hawaii. <laughs> That's the comment of the day. Cynthia, write that down. Thank you. <laughs> the answer is yes. You can remember we, you know, parties come and go. We the Whig Party left. Uh, you know, we've we, we've we've had these things. So um, another will fill the vacuum. I, I'm hoping that the sane Republican Party will branch out and maybe they call themselves the real GOP party, or maybe they just say the party of what's happening now. Just, the name isn't important. It's the concept behind it and and the mission and the goals and the policies. The fact that they want to preserve the democracy and the constitution and make Americans' lives better, that's the goal of a party. Whether you call it Democrats, uh, the old GOP, the new GOP, or the party of what's happening now, it's the betterment of lives of Americans. And I'm hoping that will take place. Okay, you guys, great discussion. Tim Apicello, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair. It's an ongoing conversation. I'm sure we'll find more to talk about next week. Thank you so much. Aloha.